So let's finish the model with the creases and some normals. And for building creases so that you have a little bit of sharpness on a subdivision object, you can go two routes. One route is the classic route where you have cuts or additional cuts at the edges here. And this is a way if you use this asset later for export because you want to use it in a game engine or so on. But what you also can do is you can work with creases, so with a crease weight. And this is the way I want to show you here. Later, if you convert the object in, for example, a subdivision level of one, these creases are then baked into the mesh and then you have also your creases. Let's do that. So for adding creases here, let's test first how it looks. You have to select first what you want to crease. In my case, I decide now which edges I want. For example, this edge here is really cool. So I select now this here, go to the other side, hold down the A key and select now here this edge. And now you can add a crease node. So I press the tab key and write crease. And if you add the node over the viewport, the selection you have made is then transferred to the group field of the node. If you add the crease node over your network view, this selection is not added to the node. So keep that in mind. So if I now press enter, you will see that you have now here a crease node and here is the selection which I told you. Okay, great. Now we want to see how the crease node works. And for this, we have to make a subdivision again. So I press the plus here. And now you see that this edge here looks a little bit sharper, but I think that this cage here is a little bit distracting in the moment. So I press minus again. And instead of working with that, I use now for this demonstration, a subdivide node after the crease. If you now do that, you have here the depth, so how deep you want to subdivide. And let's do first a depth of one. And if you now take a look here, you see that this edge here is now absolutely sharp. The reason for this is that the crease node adds an attribute with the name crease weight here to the mesh. And if you hold down now your middle mouse button here over the crease node, you see that this is a vertex attribute. So on every vertex, there is now this crease weight, which is a float value. And every of these float values is now one. And the subdivide node here uses that. You can override it. So if you want to get rid of attributes, you can do it here. But in our case, it's absolutely okay. But I think one is a little bit too harsh. So let's try something else. I go here and say 0.5. And now you see, you get a little bit of a crease here, but not so much anymore. So that's the cool thing. So with this slider here, you can now tell how sharp something has to be. A question which normally comes in trainings is, why can I have a crease over one? For example, if I have one here, you see it's really absolutely sharp. So why do you want to use a crease of five, for example? It doesn't make sense. It makes sense if you know the connection to the subdivision algorithm. If you have a crease of one here and you look into the subdivide node and you have a depth of one, you will see that you have an absolutely sharp edge here. Great. But if you go into a subdivision and say we want to have a depth of two, for example, you will see that now this edge is much, much softer. It's still sharper than the other edges, but it's softer. So there's a connection between the crease value and the subdivision level. So you have to know how deep later your subdivision is, and then you can work with this crease level. If you go now in crease to two, you will see that you get your sharp edge again, because now this value here is the same like this value here. That's the background for that. If you know that you later want to work, for example, with a subdivision of three, for example, you see that you get now a rounded edge here. So if you want to have the maximum, you need here three to get the maximum out of that. That's the rule. Let's go back to the subdivide here and let's take, for example, yeah, a subdivision of two. 
because this is the poly count I'm after. And then in the crease, I can go here too. Two would be the maximum. So I go a little bit down and I search for something. Yeah, let's try something around one. What's also a good idea here at this point is that you add normals to the whole thing. So I add here a normal node at the end and set my display flag here so that you don't get weird shading. And inside of the normal node, I switch the weighting method here to by face area. And now you can try here a crisp angle. Let's try something like 80 or so. So you get a nice look here for your normals. And now we go back here to the crease. You can have as many crease nodes as you like in a row. If you say, okay, I want to have a crease for every loop separately, that's okay. But you also can go now into the crease here and you change here the group assignment. That means if you now go in here and you want to add more edges here, you click the white arrow here, you go back, you see, you are back now on the loop before the crease and you are still on the crease node to change now. Now I can add more loops here. And let's search for something which I want to add. For example, yeah, let's take this here. And to not deselect these here, I hold down the shift key, click this edge, still shift key, A key, click here to add this edge. And to write now this new selection into this field, I have to press the enter key while my mouse is over the viewport. So if I now press enter, you see these edges are added and then the display flag is back where it was here on the normal node. And now we have the second sharper edge here. And here, let's take a look from the outside. I want to see it here without anything. Yeah, now we have it here. And here maybe a third would be good. So let's go to the crease again. Go here to the selection. Shift W to see a little bit better what's going on. And I think let's try this here. Okay. So I press down the shift key, go to the other side, shift key down, A key and click enter. That's it. And let's drop out and test this. Yeah, I think that's it. So if you want, you can now make these areas here a little bit sharper here in the stem area. For this, I take a new crease node, add it here. This is the middle part. Now activate this here. And because I've now added this crease node by hand, I don't have anything here in the group. So I click here now the white arrow. It goes back to the old one. And then we can now go here into the stem and say, I want to have these here sharpened, but escape it really fast because we see that this here is sharpened because we still have here this blocky style, but this here is not right. So maybe it would be better first to select that here and select here some of these points. And let me try that here. I set my scale widget here. And then I scale this a little bit more into shape. Not a perfect circle, but something like that here. And let's take a look how this here will look. Yeah, now that here is better. And then we can go here to this edit node again. And then we can crease here a little bit. Yeah. So let's add the crease again. Go here to the white arrow of the grease node. And now we can decide where we want to have it. If you ever want to see where you have creases, a little tip here. If you go to the grease node, we can add a vertex color here. So you now see that the points are now colored where you have a crease. And then we can go back to our node and say, okay. We want to have, for example, this here and this here creased and 
these two maybe and these two so that it fits to the other creases here i press the enter key that's it and we can deactivate the vertex color again go back to the normal and now we can play with that here to make here this stem part a little bit sharper we had here let's take a look 1.4 1.14 so let's take it really sharp to two so that's it i would say this is the end of the banana modeling in the next step we would do a uv map and start shading i hope you learned something with this modeling practice my name is helga maus from pixel train have fun